good evening everybody so this is raf from technica antica sorry for uh the delay in uh, making more videos but uh life is life and being a father is being a father <laughs> yeah that's all i can say for all of you that uh, are fathers or um not being fathers or whatever you know what i'm talking about Okay, I, I decided today to do um, Q and A, not an F Q and A. Uh, that, that that's not yet possible. But uh, uh, Q and A of uh, some some emails, you know, and people send me emails, and um, I try to reply to all of them. And I've selected a uh, a few ones, and I would like them to uh, reply to them on a video. Uh, so first of all, we have. Uh, here a question from Graham from the UK. It says, "I keep on gripping on my high note on my high notes. Sorry, I struggle. I follow your videos, but I cannot manage yet the covering mechanism. Thank you. Well, first of all, Graham, thank you very much for for your question for interesting me uh, with this now." Um, you say the word uh, gripping. I'm assuming gripping means that basically you're constricting. So you're, you know, you, you feel constriction in your throat when you go uh, to the to the top. Okay. Um, now there are many techniques. There are many ways of singing. Or so many different styles as well. Uh, here we are most more or less centered in in sort of, sort of a, an operatic background. So I will explain first the operatic background, and then uh, if I've done my, I, I will go into uh, into different uh, aspects of other other styles and, and other techniques. But you you're talking about covering. And covering is really, you know, referring to um, a classical sort of orientated singing. So what happens, and I'm again, I'm going to talk about tenors, uh, but it's applicable again to both men and women, but especially men, and uh, uh, basically all, all, all fast, you know, all, all types of voices, yeah, tenor, baritone, bass, and what is in between. Now. I, I do not see. I was always I was born into singing with this idea of the passaggio, and and I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go there. That's for another video. Uh, but uh, I had a, a teacher that said El Paso. That's a place in Texas, and I I stick to that. Now, what happens when we go to uh, the you know uh, this octave here, right? Starting on C four, yeah, up to uh, G four. A flat uh, for A. Okay. Well, uh, your your voice. What is you know there are two mechanisms happening there, right? First, your larynx is tilting forwards, which basically in the old days was uh, referred as is lowering, right? Uh, if you're doing it right, it should, yeah, lowering. So it should uh, balance, it should tilt. Sorry, yeah, basculate. And, and on the other side, uh, you have the muscles of your vocal folds. We're going to just talk about and, and tendons and ligaments, but we're going to talk about two. The cricothyroids and the arytenoids. Okay. One stretches the vocal folds. The other one basically shortens it or tenses it. Okay. Now, uh, to give it... Uh, so, so one allows the vocal fold to stretch along with the tilt and that allows us to go higher and then the arytenoid uh, basically gives the uh, robustness to the sound more or less like that okay it's, it's, it's easy it's not not easy to explain but that's basically the theory now we often confuse this movement this tilting this lowering of the larynx with this action of the arytenoids. And that's what calls constriction when we're going higher. Why? Because if we do not permit um, or we don't help the larynx to tilt or the larynx to lower, 
we are going to run into um, basically overstretching the, uh, the the vocal folds because there is a, a, an imbalance in terms of those other two muscles, the cricothyroid that stretches and the arytenoids that basically pull, okay? So what is the best idea I have for you? Imagine that I'm on an, an, on an F, right? Okay, this is what I, what I call an open sound, which is basically a hard sound. Okay, so you, hear, you, you hear the glottal stroke and then you hear the note, right? Now, that's not a cover sound, that's an open sound. Is my larynx tilted? Yes, but it's not tilted all the way. There is some, some you know, more room to go. Okay, I can still go, go more. And uh, is my cricothyroid stretched? Yes, absolutely. And what about my arytenoid? Yes, indeed. In fact, a lot. So when I cover, so I'm gonna go to this, this F sharp, Right, and I'm gonna do the same, but I'm gonna do two versions. And then I'm gonna try to give you a tip about how to get there. So I do this sound. And that's what we call an open cover because it's quite deep. My, my, my larynx is a bit more tilted and um, basically there's more action of those, yeah? Uh, arytenoid, yeah, this, this pulling, yeah? Um, mechanisms. And I feel it in my throat. I feel that it's a hard sound. Now that sound can tire me. Yeah, it can tire me. But I have good news for you. There is another sound that will not tire you as much. Why? Because we're gonna depend only on the tilting and then we're gonna allow the air, yes, the air compression to do the rest. So I go with this sound, listen, listen. I would say, oh, that's falsetto head voice. I don't care. It's a sound. It's an owl. There you go. So what have I done? Basically, you're struggling with that, and you're thinking that you're, I'd say, pinching or gripping or whatever. Think about that you don't have you don't have vocal folds once you get into this area. Right? Uh, th that's it, right? Uh, As be flat, but I'm not gripping. I'm not gripping. Okay? I am actually, I'm sending air down, right? And I'm trying to keep what, you know, you've seen tons of videos, an open throat, open throat. Yeah, an open throat, but very deep. Okay, so I always think about of an ooh vowel, but not made in the mouth, made here. Yeah, here, okay? That's originally where the, the vowels are made. Okay, well, uh, Graham, I hope uh, I answered your question. Uh, <laughs> if not, please write me back and I'll try to get back to you. Okay, uh, Robert from Arizona. Hey, hello. There's a nice crater there. Uh, how do you know that what you are teaching is genuinely Meloki? Wow, wow that, that's, there's nothing new with that one. Uh, <laughs> there's, uh, there's a whole controversy going on. Uh, I don't know if it's been lately or ever since I started teaching online. Uh, why? Well, um, uh, if you have heard my, my latest videos, I always say that uh, the principles that I teach are Meloki orientated. Um, why? Because uh, as I said during, during a conversation with uh, Maestro Rivikesu, who I think right now is one of the most uh, literate in, 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 in the subject of Meloki. Uh, he said that there were, you know, um, two great masters. One was Meloki and the other one was Marcello del Monaco. And after that, even the students of Meloki himself, uh, by, by the way, uh, I recently was, was called, thank, 
who was contacted by Mr. Uh, Fabio Massa. Saluti, cari saluti. That is a, a friend and a colleague of uh, the Carlo Col Colombara, and they both um, they, they created the Paris de Venturi um, school in, in Italy. Uh, so we're in touch, and then wow, I'm super honored. So why do I know that what I'm teaching is Milwaukee orientated or is, is Milwaukee? Well, because, you know, this guy here studied with Mario del Monaco in Lancenigo. That, that was uh, where Mario del Monaco uh, lived. Uh, so he studied with Mario del Monaco directly. Well, Mario del Monaco was a student of uh, Milwaukee plus two, I don't know, right? Or as we say in Spanish, white and in a bottle, unless, unless you, you are a bull, there you go. And after, uh, you know, Mario del Monaco was married to Rina, uh, Filippi, Rina del Monaco, who was a soprano. He met her in the in the conservatory room where they, where they were both standing together. And uh, so Rina continued st uh, uh, teaching after, after the unfortunate death of Mario. And uh, James McRae continued going there. So that's why I know that at least, you know, 80% of what I'm teaching is Meloki. That's it. That's, that's, that's all. Uh, and then comparing to uh, other, you know, people and contacting other people and reading and, uh, you know, listening and here and there. Yeah. You go. But there are other elements that he, he taught other elements apart from Meloki. Sure, for sure. Like any other any other teacher, okay? Like myself, okay? But the basis, yes, they're Meloki. So, 100%. Emily from Ohio. Does this technique apply to women? Oh, yeah. You have no idea. You have no idea. And actually, I must say that uh, some of my best students are women. Uh, now I don't know why mm, there are not so many names. Usually, they associate Meloki with tenors. Why? Because of Mario and, the, you know, students of, students of Mario and the students of Meloki. But this, for women, they, the... the, the what it does is basically um, is something that is denied uh, for, for, for too long already. That is chest uh, voice in women. I, I, I basically teach my, my female students to go on basically pure chest or a very, very, like I would say mix, but very, very chesty mix all the way to an E flat E four. So we're talking, you know, all that, that area. So usually uh, many females, they, they immediately go into head voice on, on B flat. Um, I don't know if it's four, no, five, yeah, four, yeah, four, yeah. And uh, no, I developed their, their, their chest voice. Why? Because uh, as I said in, in another video, the voices of a man and a woman um, are actually the opposite. The strengths of the voice of a woman are weaknesses of the, 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 the voice of a man. So I strengthen their um, chest voice. So by the time they go to their head voice, boom. I mean, it's unbelievable. Okay. The, the result is, is fantastic. So yes. Oh, yes. It's, it is for, for women. Uh, I will try to uh, make a video with, with some samples of my students. But uh, one of the... Um, I would say, uh, yeah, one of the big names that learn this and applied uh, applies to this day uh, throughout her whole entire career, but not entirely because you know. Anyway, is Eva Maria Westbrook, who was a um, student of McRae. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's continue. Roberto. From Torino. Ok, ciao Roberto, come stai? Bene, tutto a posto? Ok. Uh, why aren't there any uh, leggero tenors linked to Melocchi? 
Ok, well, that's a very good question. Uh, leggero. Uh, you see, that's the thing, you see, leggero. You see, you, you, the, the, the whole classification of voices, um, tenor, you know, uh, light tenor or tenore leggero, tenore di grazia, tenore di disgrazia, uh, uh, lirico, lirico spinto, um, spinto dramatico, dramatico, held in tenor, uh, heroic, Okay, so we're talking about repertoire, like live repertoire, we would say, for example, okay, Rossini, Donizetti, Bellini. Uh, well, I must say that th what, what happens is, is a question of taste and style, and that the voice uh, and uh, that I have read in a, in a wonderful, uh, wonderful book that I recommend, uh, the non, non, si, non si canta con le corde vocali, and uh, yeah, you don't sing with your vocal folds. I believe I read it there, but however, um, it is true that, that that this this sort of method what it makes what Giacomini used to say, a voce di teatro, so a, a, a theater voice. So it's going to make your voice bigger and um, more robust. And then, of course, uh, some people do not agree with with this in certain repertoire, for example, Rossini. So we identify the typical uh, leggero Rossini tenor, you know, with, with a very, you know, very thin voice, very high pitched. And, uh, and we identify, you know, Melocchi with Mario del Monaco. And if you have a bit more of knowledge about it, you know, Melocchi, Merigli, Pari de Venturi, um, Zambon, oh, well, of course, Corelli, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, and so many others. I mean, come on, the list is, yeah, Martinucci. So, uh, but yet again, there are so, so many tenors that, that started, you know, for example, with Franco Bonisoli, there are so many similarities, you know, uh, that's the other thing. Every, everybody says, oh, but that, that is a Meloki singer. You know, but what about Beniamino Gigli? His top notes, his highs. His high notes sounded the same as any, you know, they had the same squillo as, as Corelli or anybody else. Anybody else is, um, you know, high notes. So there you are. Okay. So if you're looking for a reference, don't just don't get stuck. So I don't see any problem in singing the um, the, the, the the live repertoire with this. Um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of a passage because I, I used to, I started as a, as a leggero, I started as a light tenor, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of the passage of, uh, of, uh, of La Cenerentola. Si ritrovarla io gioro, amor, amor mio. Whatever. Do you have to really uh, lose? I mean, I'm not, again, no warm ups, nothing. We don't warm up. <laughs> Melo, you don't warm up. Just do. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, here we go. Now, uh, do you have to sack? Do you really think that uh, this method is going to imply that you cannot sing uh, anything but mm, verismo roles? No, you, you, you're, you're in the wrong. Absolutely not. But, yes, it is more suited uh, for um, bigger repertoire. Um, with bigger repertoire, I'm talking about, you know, Verdi and, uh, yeah, but not even composers. Norma, is that small? Hello? Yeah? Uh, that's Bellini, right? William Tell, is that small? not maybe it's sung by smaller guys nowadays but <laughs> so no it is you just don't don't confuse the method with repertoire because even though it makes your your voice uh bigger and, and stronger and whatnot uh it doesn't turn you into a beast that can only th sing one one type of thing no you can sing Mozart you can sing anything however you're gonna encounter that 
if people then try to cage your voice and make it smaller, then there is going to be a conflict. Never betray your voice. Never betray your voice. And uh, Meloki oriented techniques, what they look is actually to unleash your voice. You know, voce, voce, voce. Okay, so there you go. Whoa, let's see. Jung Hoon from Seoul. Okay, can you elaborate a bit more on support according to Meloki technique? Okay, to the Meloki technique, Meloki method. Um, okay, I'm going to do something strange, okay? There's an exercise. Imagine that I have this note, right? And I go, oh, oh, oh. Now I'm going to do like this. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, and now listen to this. Like what? As we say in Spanish. So what did I just do? Right? Like if I was an asthmatic. This is a pojo for us. <laughs> what I'm doing is basically, it's like a vacuum. So, like Parida Venturi explained, and there was a video that, you know, there was a controversy. Everything is downwards, yeah? And inwards and downwards. So, a pojo is right here where the folds meet the colonna d'aria, the subglottal pressure. So, with, for example, this exercise, you know? That's a G. That's a B flat. So, what is support? Support is down. It's down. Down and down. And with exercises such as this one, your, your body uh, learns how to support uh, your voice. That, that's it. That's the whole apoggio thing. No belly in, no belly out, no belly... Uh, sideways, no mumbo jumbo. It's just, you know? Boom. I need roots, the, the note. Okay? And finally, Patrice from France. Why Meloki uh, made such big voices? Well, once again, I think it has all to do with the, the affondo technique, which is basically elongating the, the vocal track and uh, opening all the spaces uh, available. It's, it's, it's like, like not focusing, you know, like all these, you know, uh, mask orientated, which you can as a color, but uh, not as a root, not as, a, a, um, as an appoggio, okay? Um, so that, that's it. It's, it's just that um, Meloki that, again, as Paris Venturi, Paris Venturi used to say, uh, he didn't invent anything, but he had the guts to say, that, hey, don't, don't forget about this, don't forget about this. And don't forget that, you know, people were talking about bere la voce, you know, drink the voice, but they, they were not really conscious about actually mm, getting here and uh, taking the marbles of being here, okay? Because everything happens here. The origin of, ev of everything is right here. Okay, guys, uh, yeah, too long. Okay, again, too long. Uh, I'll see what I edit or not or whatever, but uh, at least I got the video done. Uh, thank you ever so much again. Again, if you need anything, any questions, just uh, drop me an email, yeah? Cari saluti, ciao ciao, bye.